I'd like to welcome all of you tonight to Harvard Hall. This is a very historic occasion for several reasons. Tonight, we have here with us our three awardees. And the first of these is Ambassador Winston Lord. Ambassador to China, he was there many times with Henry Kissinger. We have Ambassador Nicholas Platt, who was head of the Asia Society, ambassador to many, many countries. And we have also uh, representing the National Committee on U.S.-China Relations and their chair, Carla Hills. We have Stephen Orleans, who really makes everything run there. The purpose of the Chinese Cultural Foundation is to bring all societies together based on what they have in common, not what divides them. So we're here today to bring the commonality. Jim Wolfenson, Sir James Wolfenson, said, the 21st century is the century of women leaders. He said, without this, the world will not survive. I'd like to introduce Elizabeth Wang, who's the founder of the Chinese Cultural Foundation. Good evening and welcome. Thank you, John. We are very grateful to have Mr. Greenberg as our honorary chairman. From the very beginning, we fought to have strong support from David Rockefeller, Sir James Wolfenson, and the former mayor, Mike Bloomberg. Also, thanks many of you who are here with us tonight. Over the last 15 years, we have successfully provided a high-quality cultural and educational program in partnership with many public and uh, private corporations and institutions throughout the world. We are now look forward to our exciting future. The best is yet to come. China is celebrating the 40th anniversary of the reforms coming out and they've awarded medals to the 10 most important individuals in this opening up process. And it was one American on that list, Maurice R. Greenberg, our honorary chairman. So thank, thank you, Hank, and congratulations. Really quite an honor. China has learned a lot. It's a very major economy, uh, and it, uh, it'll only get bigger. The reason I, I spent so much time in China is I believed in the future of China. Thank you very much. I want to congratulate the honorees this evening. I've known many of them for a long time, and congratulations. Let me say a few words about uh, U.S.-China. To me, it's the most important relationship in the world today. I think it's in the interest of both countries. Uh, China today is the second largest economy, soon to be the first. I think the relationship like all relationships, have ups and downs. We all know that, and I believe that will be solved. The number of students, Chinese students, coming to the United States is uh, many, many. We support a program in Yale, for example. I serve on the advisory board of Xinhua University, a great school. In fact, one of my granddaughters will be going there in another year. I'm doing my part to try and help. Thank you very much. Why do China and the United States now view each other so hostily? Both lack the ability to put themselves in the other's shoes. We need a benign and a positive interaction, but how? Stay hungry and stay foolish. Steve Jobs, yeah. Only by pursuing common goals hungrily and assuming themselves as foolish can they keep competitive and successful forever? Let us do something helpful to this end, and a cultural exchange is one of what we can do. Thank you. My warm gratitude to the Chinese Cultural Foundation at a particularly important time. I do think we are at the most severe junction, a tipping point in U.S.-China relations, the most fraught with danger since the opening in the 1970s. The foundation is the historic phenomenon of a rising power 
versus an established power, which is bound to create tensions and adjustment. I agree with Hank that I think we will survive it. And this calls for more exchange, not less, more engagement, not less. And that is why I'm particularly pleased to receive this award by this organization at this time. Thank you. Chinese friends call me the fossil who talks. At least I have a long view. Much of my work since leaving the U.S. government occurred under the auspices of the Asia Society, chaired for years by Mr. Greenberg. It has placed me squarely in the middle of people-to-people -people relations between our countries. These private relations now constitute the largest part of the dealings between us. The people-to-people -people exchanges remain the ballast of the relationship. That, in the end, is going to be what determines the future. It's the people who are going to decide it. Whether you're a mother in New York or a mother in Shanghai, your concerns are actually the same. And what the people do know is that in order to deal with the real crises confronting this world, the United States and China are going to need to cooperate. And that's the message that Carla would deliver tonight. So I thank you, Elizabeth and John, on Carla's behalf, and I thank you all for coming tonight. Thank you. Go away. This event actually is the perfect example of how business, culture, and art working together in harmony. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to NASDAQ. My name is Brian Joyce from NASDAQ's Market Intelligence Desk, and it's truly my great pleasure to welcome the Chinese Cultural Foundation, along with its co-founder, Elizabeth Wang, and founding trustee, Mr. John W. Allen. <laughs>